video we're going to look at how to calculate atomic mass. So what is atomic mass? Atomic mass is a weighted average mass of all the naturally occurring isotopes in a sample of the element. So let's say something like carbon. Um, carbon can be found as carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14, those numbers being the mass numbers. Um, and some of them are more abundant in nature than others. The atomic mass will be closest to the mass number of the most abundant of those isotopes, and that's why we say it's weighted. So it basically considers all the possible mass numbers for that particular element and is an, a weighted average of them. So there's a formula that you should know. Um, the atomic mass equals okay, the percent abundance over a hundred times the mass of the isotope and then you do that for each of the naturally occurring isotopes that exist. So let's say there's two isotopes that exist for that particular element. You would do that again for isotope 2. You would find the percent abundance, put that over 100, and multiply by the mass of the second isotope. Notice that I have parentheses around these two things. So you would want to do this operation first where you take the percent abundance over 100 times the mass do it for the second isotope and then you add them together. Um, if you had a third isotope you have a third term here um, and you can do this in your calculator all in one step but if you do make sure you do put the parentheses um, because that makes sure you have the correct order of operations. Okay, so this is a formula that you should know, and it lets you calculate the atomic mass. Now, I say percent abundance over 100, and some sources or textbooks that you might look this up in, they call that fractional abundance. Um, it's basically turning a percent abundance um, into a decimal. So if it was 78%, by dividing by 100, it turns it into 0.78, and we call that the fractional abundance. Um, so percent abundance and mass would be things that are given to you of those isotopes. So the best way to really look at this is to just do an example, because at first glance, this equation might look intimidating, but it's really easy to use. So take a moment, look at this example, pause the video and try it. What is the atomic mass for boron considering the following? There's two naturally occurring isotopes, naturally occurring meaning isotopes that are found in nature for boron. One is boron 10, remember this is the mass number, one is boron 11. And I give you the percent abundance, about 20% is boron 10, about 80% is found as boron 11. And I give you the masses. So take a moment and try this example. Okay, so all you're doing is you're plugging into the atomic mass formula. And notice that this is mass in units of AMU. AMU, remember, stands for atomic mass unit. It's a very, very small unit. There's about 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd AMUs in one gram. Okay, just for, you know, comparison's sake. Okay, so atomic mass is equal to the percent abundance over 100 times the mass for each of these isotopes. So here's my first isotope. Percent abundance is 20 over 100 to essentially turn it into a decimal, or you might just write 0.2. Um, times the mass is 10.01, and then do the same thing for the second one, percent abundance over 100 times the mass, and notice I'm putting them in parentheses, um, and then like a, um, you, if you want to do this in each step, you can do it all in one step in your calculator if you want, just don't forget the parentheses, or you can do it um, yourself in steps, so if I do 20 over 100 times 10.01, I get 2 AMUs would be the unit carried down, atomic mass units, and 80 over 100 times 11.01, .01, I get 8.81, and then I just add these two numbers together, and I get 10.81. Um, so there's a lot of things we should note about this example, um, things that we can estimate, things that we can check our work with. So first of all, if I go to my periodic table and I look up boron, the atomic mass is written there, 10.811. Notice that my answer closely matches this, maybe just a few less um, significant figures. Um, so you can always check your work using the periodic table, but sometimes you might be asked to show your work, or you might be made up given like a fictional element that doesn't exist, and then you can't check your work, um, so you have to do, you do have to know this equation. But it's really good to understand, well, how did they get this atomic mass on the periodic table? So the other thing you should notice is that, um, Sometimes they won't give you this column. Notice that boron having a mass number of 10, the mass is essentially 
10. So I really didn't need this last column. Instead of 10.01, it just gives me a few more significant figures to a few more decimal places. I could have just written 10 here and give, and it would give me approximately the same answer. So if you don't have mass numbers, uh, you don't have masses in AMU, just use the mass number. And that's why it's called the mass number, because it is the mass of the atom. Each proton and each neutron weigh about one AMU, so that is the mass of the atom. And remember, electrons are negligible. All the masses in the nucleus, the protons and neutrons. Um, the other last thing to note is that the atomic mass you got is 10.81. And notice that that is closest to the, this closest to the mass of my most abundant isotope. So 80% is found as boron 11. So I could assume, without having even done this problem yet, that my atomic mass is going to be closer to 11 than it would be to 10. And notice that it is 10.81. And remember, if you remember back when I was saying you don't look up mass number, the atomic mass is an average of all the possible mass numbers that um, you, the atomic mass is closest to the mass number of the most abundant element, uh, isotope, and that's true here. So whatever isotope has the highest abundance, that's what your atomic mass is going to be closest to, and you can use it to estimate your atomic mass. My atomic mass would be somewhere between 10 and 11, because those are the t only two isotopes that exist, and it will be closer to 11 than 10, because more of them are found as boron 11. And that's why we call it a weighted average. It's closer to the thing that's more abundant. Take a moment and try this problem. Pause the video and check your work. Okay, I want you to do two things. First, just looking at this data, and don't use your periodic table. I don't want you to look up the answer yet. Um, estimate what the atomic mass of silicon is going to be closest to. What whole number is it going to be closest to, looking at this data. And then actually calculate the atomic mass. Notice this one has three isotopes, so it's going to just have one more term, um, percent abundance over 100 times the mass of a third isotope that you will add in. Okay. So let's check your work. Looking at the data below, notice my most abundant isotope is SI28. So my mass uh, number of SI28 is 28. It would weigh about 28 AMU. Remember I said if you don't have a mass column, just use the mass number. Um, so that's what my atomic mass should be closest to. It should be pretty close to 28. There are very, very few isotopes exist other than SI28, and they're a little bit higher. So I'm going to guess that this is going to be slightly higher than 28. Okay, so let's calculate it. Atomic mass is percent abundance over 100 times the mass for each isotope that exists and you add them together. So 92.21 over 100 times 28 is the mass. That's for isotope 1. Do the same thing for isotope 2, 4.7 percent abundance over 100 times the mass. And I'm just using the mass numbers as the mass. Um, and SI30 has an abundance of 3.09, so I do the same thing. I multiply these things within the parentheses first, and then I add those terms together and I get 28.1, which is what I estimated it to be. It makes sense. It's closest to 28, which is the mass number or the mass of the most abundant isotope. And if I look on my periodic table, I see that I am correct. This might have some more significant figures, some more decimal places, but this is 28.1.